Hey everyone, I'm Rod and Todd, a professional YouTuber who makes professional videos. And it's Tuesday, which means it's time for another Transformers review. So, here we go. This is WFC S8 COG. He was released in the deluxe size class as part of the first wave of the War for Cybertron Siege toy line. As always, we'll start with a vehicle mode. Cog transforms into this thing. I don't really know how to describe it. It's like a half track vehicle of some sort. Uh, as you can see, it's got treads here in the back, and then it's got six wheels up front. But it actually has eight wheels. There's treads are fake, and there's two tiny little wheels under there. So I don't really know what to call this thing. I like, like, I, like technically, I don't know what to call this. So I just like to call it an artillery vehicle. And it does have this unique little gimmick. It can actually split into two separate halves and function as two independent vehicles. The original Cog toy could do the same thing, to where there was Gasket and Gromit who combined to form Cog. So, uh, I should mention though that the two halves of the vehicle mode are held together by this really tiny little peg, and so it does not stay together at all. It just falls apart if you so much as look at it the wrong way. So for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to keep these separated for the rest of this segment of the video. So let's start with the front portion. The front portion, or gasket, is this, I guess, car buggy thing. The original cog toy could actually hold a headmaster figure right in between the guns, but as far as I'm aware, you cannot fit a Titan's Return headmaster right there, which is sad. He's got these gigantic front guns, which they can hold, or they can uh, accommodate the little blast effect pieces, so it looks like they're shooting. And there's also a couple more of those front pegs here. That isn't so much for the vehicle mode, but that's more for this one portion I'll talk about later. It's got four wheels up there. And overall, it's pretty simplistic. The other half is this blue half-track thing. It doesn't have any armaments, but it does have holes right here on the top, which can accommodate the figure's guns. Personally, when it's in vehicle mode, this is where I like to store the weapons. Just because it makes it to where the back half is armed, and it also makes it to where when you separate them, this thing can actually defend itself. These guns can also accommodate the blast effect parts, so... There you go. Pew pew. Anyway, there's Cog's vehicle mode. It's kind of weird, but I like it. I think it looks pretty cool. So, uh, now that we're done with the vehicle mode, let's take a look at the packaging. So, here is the box for Cog. I should mention that I nearly died getting this out of my closet. And I'm probably going to nearly die every time I take out boxes for other figures down the road because these are all really high up in my closet and they're all neatly stacked on top of each other. So it's it's fun. But anyway, I'm not talking about the or I'm not here to talk about the circumstances in which I got this out. Here's the box. So as you can see, it says it has the uh, Siege logo right there, Transformers logo there. It's got the uh, uh, the rank insignia on the inside. Yeah, these symbols on the inside of the packaging, if you don't know, they're supposed to be like rank insignias. And Hasbro actually provided an official meaning as to what each symbol is supposed to mean. But I don't know what it means. I haven't gone through that. You can see it says COG right there. And then you turn it to this side, it's got the Siege mural, which is on every Siege figure box. I'm not going to go over it here, 
if you want to take a look at the details, you can pause the video or you can go and watch my side swipe review for a more in-depth analysis. We take a look at the back here. As you can see, it transforms from robot to vehicle in eight steps. And it doesn't have a cross cell for uh, the uh, any of the Battlemaster figures. However, it does have a cross cell for Sideswipe, but that's basically to advertise this figure's gimmick. It has some text here. It says, Weaponizer figure becomes six weapons. I don't know why you can see that. It says, Weaponized figure. And then, Break apart weapons. And we'll talk about all this here in a bit. And then here's the package art. As you can see, it shows off the vehicle mode as opposed to the robot mode. And it's got the front portion here and the rear portion here. And you can see there's the guns right there that I said I'd like to mount on the back of the vehicle mode there. And so that's kind of cool. I do absolutely love the packaging art on each of these figures, so or each of these figures' boxes, so that's cool. Here's the bottom and here's the top if you want to take a look at those. Anyway, that's the box. So, uh, yeah. So, and now we're done with the box. Normally, this is where I'd move on to the robot mode, but this is a weaponizer figure. So, there's something a little extra I want to talk about first. So, here's a little extra something I said I was going to talk about. So, Kong is one of the three weaponizer deluxe class figures that were released in Siege. Kong is the only weaponizer I have from Siege, so... Yeah, I do have every single one from Earthrise, though. Somehow. Anyway, uh, so... Kong doesn't transform like a normal Transformer. There's no part shifting, you don't move everything around, and the entire figure isn't necessarily self-contained. Kong employs something called parts forming. Basically, the entire figure disassembles into these component parts here, and then they reassemble into the other form. If you ever bought those Creo Transformer figures, it's basically the same principle. Except these, you don't have to completely disassemble, just into a bunch of large chunks. So here he is in all his parts laid out, and in typical Siege fashion, every single one of these components has a goofy name. So you got this piece here, which the instructions call the C40 Neutron Synthesis Shield. And you have this piece here, which is called the CLR Thermal Booster. And then these two parts here, which are the CHV Electro Scramblers, and then these two things here, which are the CM3 HF Spectrum Disruptors. As with every weapon name in Siege, the names mean nothing, it's just a bunch of words thrown together. But I still like it because it just adds a little extra depth to everything. So anyway, that's enough talking about the components. Now let's move on to the robot mode. So here's Kong in his robot mode. Uh, yeah, and as with a lot of other obscure Transformers characters, now that he's in robot mode, we need to raise the question, who is this guy? So Kong was released as part of the original Transformers toy line in the 80s. And he wasn't sold by himself. He was sold, packed in with the Autobot Fortress Maximus as kind of his little partner robot alongside Cerebros and the Autobot Spike. And uh, Fortress Maximus was a headmaster, so he could accommodate Cerebros, who turned into his head, who in turn had the Autobot Spike transform into his head. So Spike formed the head of Cerebros, and then Cerebros formed the head of Fort Max. It's confusing. So Kong was packed in as like the little partner robot. Every single one of the big city formers had some sort of partner robot. And Kong was basically the same as he is now. He was two vehicle components that could merge into a single large vehicle, and then could parts form into a robot. 
So basically, this is the exact same thing as the original COG, except he's not packed in with Fort Max, he's taller, and he has better articulation and sculpting. Which is cool. So, uh, yeah, there's COG. Now, I should also mention this is his first ever brand new toy since the 80s, which is great, really great. So uh, let's take a look at the articulation. He has a swivel at the head, so we can move his head side to side. He does not have a ball joint head, so he can't look up and down. He has swivels at the shoulders, so he can move his arm forward and back, and also out. Also, this piece is on a hinge for some reason. I don't know why. It doesn't factor into the transformation or anything. He's got a bend at the elbow, so he can bend it like that and also swivel a little bit. He does not have wrist swivels. He does have a waist swivel. He's got these universal joints at the thighs so they can move out, forward, and they don't really move back much because of this piece right here. He also has a swivel at the thigh so you can rotate his thigh out like that if you really want to. Bend at the knee and as with every War for Cybertron trilogy figure Sideways ankle joints, so you can pose them like this, I guess, and still have them stand flat. Which is really great if you're into posing your figures. So yes, despite the whole parts forming thing, this figure still has articulation on par with all the other... Siege figures, which is cool. And now let's look at his accessories. He has these two black guns, they are identical. And the instructions call these RT5 circuit welders. And the box and the instructions tell you to put them in his hands like this. However, these guns aren't really constructed in the same way as all the other siege guns. You got side swipes going here, you note that the peg is completely round. However, on this, I don't know how well you can see it, but it's mostly round, but the sides are flat, which makes it to where it doesn't really stay in very well, and it's really loose. You can just flips and flops everywhere. So I don't like to put these on his, or in his hands, because they, they're loose and it just isn't very good. I like to stick them in the holes on the sides of his arms, so you can have his guns be arm mounted. It's not the most practical, but I think it looks pretty cool. Plus something else I like to do is have it to where when they're not in use, they just fold back like this. I think it's pretty neat. And yes, uh, as shown earlier, the uh, Guns can accommodate the little blast effect parts. Pew pew. A has a few pegs on his body that allow you to mount the blast effect pieces. Stuff like this looks stupid, but if you were to take like Taraxodon's blast effect piece, or it's like a big blue burst of whatever, it would look like an explosion. Also, you can make it like this. You can put stuff here to make it look like he has exhaust pipes up by his head or something, and they're flame. I don't know. Anyway, that's Cog's robot mode, basically. It's really nothing too special. But this figure does have two extra modes. Him being a weaponizer allows for a pair of extra configurations. So we're going to show those off right now. So, Cog being a weaponizer allows him to disassemble, not just in, into his component parts and then reassemble between robot and vehicle modes, but he can also assemble into various weapons that can be used by any other siege figure, or really any other transformer with compatible fist holes. So, the instructions and the back of the box shows him being used by Sideswipe, so we got Sideswipe here to demonstrate. The instructions also provide two different configurations, there being a defensive configuration and an offensive configuration. This is the defensive configuration, and I'll start with that. So, 
First off, the legs transform into these big platform shoes. If you're wondering why your Siege figures have 5mm compatible holes in the bottom of their feet, this is why. Got these pegs on the top, and it just connects onto the bottom. So now Sideswipe's got these massive shoes. Then the entire torso has this peg inside, and there's a hole on Sideswipe's arm, and it just attaches on the side. And then the arms and waist combine to form this backpack with two guns, and it just attaches on the hole in his back. Ugh. I've never been a big fan of this of these forms right here because for one they make whatever figure you're using them on kind of back heavy. You see, it sideswipes legs like that. That's how I prevent them from falling over. I think the platform shoes look kind of stupid, to be honest, and really, this only works with some figures, because some figures don't have a back hole, or some figures don't have the right holes in their arms to where it can accommodate this piece, and yeah, it's just not really the best. As with a lot of other things in Siege, which is the battle damage paint, I feel like they were really pushing it hard with the first two waves, but then after that, just gave up. And yeah, you can still give Sideswipe his little red gun if you want to do that. Shoot, shoot. And then you can have him firing stuff. So there's the defensive configuration. So uh, now we need to take a look at the offensive configuration, which is somehow even more ridiculous. So here is the offensive configuration. Unlike the defensive configuration, it only creates three or uh, two components as opposed to like four. But this one's pretty ridiculous. So the legs, waist, and arms all combine from this massive backpack, where that just attaches into the peg on sets of its back. So he's one to fall over, so I gotta do some. Yep, there he goes. They gotta kind of lean him forward like this. And then the torso transforms into this thing. It's got another peg at the bottom that flips out. And this forms a gigantic gun thing. And there you go. There's the offensive configuration. See, that's why the uh, this end here had a little effect piece compatibility. So you could have that like that. Again, not a big fan of this. I mean, it looks cool, yeah, but it's just not very practical. Really, I think the best parallel I can think of is those, uh, with the, uh, if you remember the vintage G.I. Joe line had the Sonic Fighters, which were these ordinary G.I. Joe figures, but with these massive electronic backpacks that played sound effects, and they were so big that you had to lean the entire figure forward in order to get it to stand up with a backpack on, and it was overall just really stupid. That's what I think of when I see this, and there it goes. If you've seen the Netflix cartoon, uh, Kai actually does use this mode in the cartoon, where he partners with RC. However, Earthrise RC doesn't even have a back peg, so it can't recreate that moment, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about Siege Cog. Interesting vehicle mode, mediocre robot mode, everything else is just this. So, hope you all enjoyed this video. Make sure you like and subscribe and turn on notifications. Anything to get the algorithm going to please people. And, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching. Uh, tune in next week, though, as we review the Autobot Hound. This has been Rod and Todd, signing off.